Hi, and thanks for watching The Social Life, the place to be for entrepreneurs with a purpose to unleash their something amazing. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about a question I received on YouTube, and it's by Michelle Brown, and she asks, Ashley, um, is it poor etiquette to ask someone to be a board member through email, or do you recommend a face-to-face -face meeting, if possible? So yes, Michelle, you are totally hitting it right on the head. So I definitely always think face-to-face -face is the best for any sort of um, you know request where you're asking someone to give their time or their effort or energy towards your purpose or your mission. It's a very important time for you as well, starting your nonprofit or any sort of advisory board that you have um, by asking someone to come alongside you and, and join you on your mission and help you fulfill your vision uh, for what you're trying to do. So yes, um, when you're asking those questions, it's extremely important in my mind to make sure that you ask them in person. That's a short answer to a pretty loaded question because even when you're looking for your board members, there are a lot of things that you should keep in mind. Before you even start to look, you really need to think about a few things. You need to really know your needs for your organization and these needs will change each time a new board member comes on or off your board. And if you're just starting um, and this is your first, your very first board, you may actually be needing these people to guide you. So you may need um, a couple of people who are close to you, maybe maybe family members, maybe friends who have you know developed this vision with you and helped you. Um, you know maybe they've been listening to uh, the, the way that you'd like the organization to run or how you'd like it to go, and they can really help bring your vision to life. And then there are people who you may not know very well, but who can help you accomplish your actual mission. Or there are also people who are directly affected by your mission. Say you're running a foster care center and you have someone in your life, like in a volunteer pool or um, someone that you associate with that was a foster child who may have background information on what it's like to be a foster child and what would be nice to have in a foster care center. And so those are the types of things like you don't have to rush to get a board. Um, you just need to make sure that you are um, keeping your eyes and ears open for people who could be great potential board members. So you might be asking like, well, what makes a great potential board member? Well, some of the things that make a good potential board member are if they are already part of your your mission and already see some of your vision. Maybe it's people you've gone to to ask for advice. Maybe um, you've talked to another nonprofit executive director and you found that they had some information that you needed or they guided you in a specific way. Or maybe it's people that um, you work closely with who you know are um, vested in seeing you succeed. I mean, it, it, your board members can come from a lot of different a lot of different places, but the big thing really is to understand that you know your own specific needs for your organization. When I say that, I mean, do you need a financial person? Do you need someone to help oversee the finances? Do you need a legal person? Do you need someone who is out in the community and has started a nonprofit before or has, or has been part of a, a new nonprofit, a new startup? So you know, my other, my other recommendation for this would be to start really small. You can have a board up to, I think, 13 to 17 people, I think is the, the one of the larger boards that people recommend um, as far as governance and things like that. Um, but if you want to have a small board, like I have a board of just five of us, and there are five of us on the board, and if there's something where I need to abstain from making a decision, then I leave it to the rest of the four members. But all of these members had specific things I was looking for in someone. We have someone who's excellent with numbers, excellent with marketing, um, good at being uh, a sound decision maker, and you know they're not afraid of telling me, no, I'm going the wrong direction, or no, that idea doesn't really make sense, or no, we shouldn't do that. And that's important for me. I know that I have a strong personality, and I needed someone or people on my board that I knew would tell me the truth. And so... I, I wanted people who were going to allow me to work my vision and to do um, do the things I wanted to do to accomplish my mission, but also that would tell me if I were going off the rails or I was going the wrong direction or um, if I was doing something wrong. So I needed a legal person as well and I really, I needed that, that was very important to me. Um, so it's really important that you just have the people, you have to look at 
what type of person you are, you have to look at what type of people you need and then what type of areas of expertise that you're trying to fill. And then on top of that, of course, you wanna have a diverse, a diverse board as well. But when you're first starting out with your board, understand that your board may not be perfect. The biggest thing you want to really worry about on your board is not having more than 50% of your staff that's being paid from your nonprofit, along with 50%, you know, making up, comprising a 50% of your staff that's being paid or family members. So those are really the biggest, the biggest pieces of your board. If you feel comfortable with friends that you have or people that you know in the community, absolutely you know, take the time to, um, you know, meet with them face to face and recruit them for your board and ask them if they're interested. You know, this is a, this is a, um, a commitment that they're making and a commitment that you're making to work together to make this mission possible. Now, if you don't know someone, um, one of the things I would recommend is you can first do an email. Absolutely. Um, just as a, hi, my name is so-and-so and, -so, and I, I'm running this new nonprofit. I'm looking for board members and I looked over your information and your resume and it looks as if you'd be a perfect candidate for our board. And you can say something like that to get the conversation rolling and tell them why you think they'd be a perfect fit for your board, what those times and hours might entail, and how long, you know, is the actual, uh, how long would they actually be serving on your board? Is it a one-year term, a two-year term, a three-year term? Do they have options? Um, what would you expect from them? Are you a working board, a non-working board? So those would be types of things that you would want to put in the, in the, uh, the initial email when you send them an email if you don't know the person. Um, and then you might want to ask in that email for either a phone call or a face-to-face -face meeting to just explain a little bit more about your mission, explain a little bit more about what you're thinking that you would um, get from them on your board and why you're, you know, wanting to recruit them. Those things are all really important and, you know, you want to minimize um, the amount of no's that you're going to get from that email by putting more information in the um, email. So um, really make your focus that you want to get a meeting set up and or a phone call. And if you're comfortable with a phone call and then recruiting from there or comfortable with an initial phone call, explaining yourself and then meeting face to face, I would say that would be the gradual progression to get someone on your board and to make the ask. So Michelle, my advice would be, yes, you can definitely make an ask via email if you do not know the person and it is a strictly cold call. But you need to know that your mission in that email is to get a phone call or a face-to-face -face meeting before you actually recruit them onto your board because you want to make sure this is a good fit for them and that it's a good fit for you and before you start just sending out your email you need to make sure that you have all of these things together you know your needs you know what you're looking for in that person and why you're recruiting them you know what the terms are that they would be um, serving on your board and then you also know um, if you're a working board or not because that's really important to a lot of people. Some people don't have the time to be a working board or to be on or part of a working board. And you know, do you require them to help you with fundraising? Are you gonna require them to do board recruitment? Like what are you actually requiring from them? Those are all really important decisions that a new board member will need to make before deciding to be on your board or not. The last thing I would recommend for uh, recruiting board members, new board members, is to develop an orientation process. What is it that you want your board members to know? Um, this is one of the mistakes I made when I first started and you know, I would hope that I could help you guys not make the same mistake. But when you recruit a new board member, you know, a lot of my board members already had some idea of my program, how it worked. And I actually was asked a couple times, like, do I need some board members and would I be interested in having them be part of my board? And so it kind of happened organically, which was really nice. But one of the things that I didn't have and um, I would definitely recommend now and any new new board members that happen to come on the board from here on out would go through an orientation process. So that means I would send them through my website. I would make them read some of the information that we have on our website. Um, I would do a personal sit down with them and tell them about the organization and how it works and then also make sure that you know they understand the ins and outs of you know, how a child gets referred to our program, what happens after they're referred, um, how we use our emails, you know, all of those types of things. They should know a, a good understanding of if someone asks them, 
how does this program work? They should have a good understanding of that. And I was lucky that my board members actually uh, were very vested in how this program works and what we do. And so, um, so I have a board full of full of people who are able to do that, right? And so that's what you want. You want your board members to truly be your ambassadors and um, be able to speak about your nonprofit just like you. Um, so yeah, I mean, feel free to email. Um, you just wanna make sure that if you email, your, your goal in that email is not to ask them to be your board member. Your goal in that email is really to get a face-to-face -face meeting. And that would be your goal in the email and the phone call. And then finally in the face-to-face, -face, you would ask them for your, um, for, you know, for them to actually serve on your board. So I truly hope that helps you. I think it was a little long-winded, but I, I wanted to make sure that I explained why um, it needs to go that route and some of the things that your organization should need before you actually start to look for a board member or board members. Um, and that there is a difference between starting with someone cold and um, recruiting someone who's already part of your sphere of influence and part of your mission and vision. They already know those things. So I would definitely start moving out from your circle and then recruiting from your circle and then recruiting outwardly from there um, and start small. I mean, there's no reason that you have to have a huge board. Um, I run my nonprofit with five people and I think it's an amazing board. I, I feel like, you know, we're able to make a lot of decisions and a lot of um, direction comes from that board. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think start with a small board and um, develop an orientation process. Those are some of the things that you'll want to start focusing on before you go out and start recruiting your new board members. But Michelle, good luck. And, and everyone else, good luck on recruiting your new board members for your something amazing. And get out there and unleash it on the world. I will see you next week. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and don't forget to sign up for The Social Life.